Hello, I'm MBX Toycat, and today I have a very personal announcement I'd like to share. But first, I have something much more interesting, much cooler, that I'm going to be sharing with you, and it is to do with lighting. Because this right here is a place where I intended to build a giant island all the way at sky height, which is now 320 blocks, by the way, which takes a little bit of time to climb by scaffolding, but let's do it. Because up here at Y320, I've done a few little things trying to have some fun. The first of which I traded with a villager. There's an achievement for doing so in this update. And uh, then my villager just despawned. I also brought a skeleton horse up here because there was a space in the boat. And, you know, what are you going to do? But, uh, okay, we're here now. Oh, no. Oh, God. Okay. So now we want to place some... Oh, God. <laughs> we're just going to place a few blocks around here. And now we got a, a place for... Just temporarily, you know, just some dirt. This, we're going to replace this with endstone eventually. There's going to be an island up here. It's going to be nice. But for now, we have we have a little island where we can... There we go. Look at that. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, uh, I, I figured it would be fun to have a skeleton horse and a villager at sky height. But while I was playing around up here trying to test some other things, I noticed something very strange. Notice how there's a torch right there, but it still looks kind of dark until I stand on the scaffolding. When I stand on the scaffolding... I light up as a character, and everything around me just kind of seems a bit brighter. Like, the tools in my inventory get brighter, which is weird, because if I stand right over here, and I place torches on both sides of this block, it does nothing of the sort. It might do it something temporarily when I break the block, but now I've just lost two torches, and so that wasn't very smart. And so I realized something very strange about the height limit, and that is that things don't really work correctly up here. I mean, we can give all sorts of examples of this, but the best one to point out right here is if we use some glass and some obsidian. So I'm I'm gonna break all the dirt that's up here because it kind of is ugly and there's no reason for this to exist now that there's no... Actually, it was useful for the slime block. Oh, well, you know, it's gone now forever. Um, but, <laughs> but basically, um, I, 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 I figure now we have this uh, very cool area up here. Let's do some fun things. Let's place some blocks and let's do a really interesting effect because um, the, the effect that, that I'm curious that, that, that happens right here is that... No, Mr. Skeleton Horse, please stay where you are, actually. I would like you not to move. No, 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 you're gonna... You're going to stay right over here on this island. Thank you. No, no, damn it. <laughs> Skeleton horse does not understand instructions. Oh, Christ. <laughs> you know, it's very scary trying to do this stuff at this height. So what we're going to do is we're going to start it from over here so the skeleton horse can follow me if he wants. And ideally not fall off the edge. Basically, what happens is at the lair uh, limit, light cannot be placed. Obviously, you can't place a torch up here. And so that means that light blocks and the light entities and all the ways that this work also cannot move past this height. And this means the only way that light can reach lair 320 is if it reaches it via a transparent block or a light source block like a glowstone or something. And that means that even if we go glass, obsidian, glass, obsidian, glass, obsidian, and we have torches along all of it, or just every other block or something, um, what's going to happen is you're going to have this very fun uh, little thing where you go from being bright to dark to bright to dark to bright to dark. And so what we can do with this is we can kind of simulate that magic star effect from Super Mario <laughs> because we'll flash rapidly uh, going on or off, which we can do just fine by ourselves, but also because we happen to have a skeleton horse up here anyway, because I mean, who doesn't bring a horse with them to the sky limit? We can do the exact same with him and he is the one who will flash rapidly back and forth, which looks pretty cool, doesn't it? It makes it feel like we're playing Mario Kart. And you know what? Haven't you always wanted to play Mario Kart in the sky? If the answer is no, I don't even know who you are. Speaking of not knowing who you are, I have an important thing I'd like to say. And I'm going to say it from the top of my sugarcane farm. If you don't know, this is my insane sugarcane farm. It's very big. We worked in it in last week's episode. You probably should be familiar with it now. But I have a sugarcane farm that goes all the way up to height limit. Technically not up to height limit. It goes up to one block below height limit. Which is handy because it means I can place blocks up here. Like sugarcane perhaps. Or torches or any of the things like that. It's very handy to have, truth be told. Um, but I have, a, I have a, a, a farm that goes all the way up to 320 blocks, or 319 if you want to be a sickler, and it's going to go all the way down to the new height floor, the, the bottom of the world, if you will. And here's the problem with that. Going down below the pre-existing bedrock layer, the deep slate layer, as we can now call it, layer zero, is a little bit of a struggle because instead of just placing blocks into the sky, which already took, by the way, multiple hours, now what we have to do is something very different, which is this. Um, so we have to dig right down below this thing, and uh, in the last couple of hours of streaming, I achieved only this amount. But I'm hoping now that we've done most of the architecture work, 
uh, that things can go a lot smoother because we're just mining, mining, mining uh, downwards. And you know what? Mining, mining, mining downwards is kind of how my emotional state is right now. <laughs> see that? See that transition? But yeah, I have to mine this entire area flat now a little bit because everyone loves a little bit more satisfying flat grounds. I know that too. Um, but I, I, I do have an important announcement because for the first time, I've uh, so. Uh, this, on, honestly, I, I, uh, the, 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 the answer is I have COVID. I don't actually have COVID. I, 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 I am potentially, uh, in danger of having a COVID, which is a really interesting thing, right? Because I am so bummed, you know, like, uh, I, if, if this had just happened, like, a year and a half earlier in the pandemic, I could have put that in the video title, the thumbnail, I have COVID could have been the, the selling point, could have been a really good way to get people excited about the channel. But, like, saying you have COVID now is like, oh yeah, so... You know, it'd be weird if you didn't have COVID at this stage. Um, <laughs> and honestly, that is the weirder thing. Like, I, um, because uh, of legally compelled reasons, I've been forced to travel a ton. Uh, not a ton, like three, four, five times during this pandemic. I haven't been able to travel recreationally until this week, which is when I did a test. Because, again, mo most of the time doing a test is, you know, like, how many diseases do we just randomly test people for? Like, just in case they have it and somehow don't know about it. It's not a very common thing, but we do that with uh, with COVID, and it's a requirement to uh, enter certain countries that you need a test. Just kind of showing you definitely don't have the thing. And so, uh, obviously, I'm feeling confident. Like every other COVID test I've done for the past few years, like, I probably had it at some point in early 2020, honestly. I was in a very busy area, kind of like, uh, that. It, you know, it was, it was a given that, like, that was a trade-off for me being there. And uh, so, uh, that's why I was so surprised when actually, um, you know, despite my assumptions uh, prior to that point, uh, the test came back and it was uh, actually a, a positive test, which is the scariest thing. Like, man, we have this like whole protocol in place that's like, okay, so now the moment there is a positive test, you know, we could do this thing where we encourage people to do the best thing for them. And no, 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 no. We have a whole set of things in place where like you get a cool, every single person you know is like, uh, you know, contacted to like make sure that they check on themselves. It's like a really, really, really good uh, system in a lot of places. But yeah, I had this and it was like really weird because I'd done a ton of tests beforehand. I had no symptoms, I had nothing like that. And so I, I did the uh, the old test -a -roo, like, okay. Um, like with, and, and this is, this is where I feel like a little bit uncomfortable sharing this with the internet because some of you are going to be very like, ooh, Toy Cat, are you sure? Are you sure that's what happened? So I, I did a couple more tests and both of those came back negative. And so what do you assume with two negatives and a positive? The health advice is to say you assume negative, right? And so then, you know, the, the answer is do a third and then do a fourth test. When you get like an 80% ratio, that's when you can be sure. And it's kind of nutty when you think about it. Like we, um, you know, like the, the, there is this like thing that is potentially inside of me that potentially a lot of people don't want, myself included. But like we have no real way of knowing because even tests have a degree of inaccuracy. Also, anyone that's been in and around my life, even people who perhaps live with me, have not had a single uh, test result. And so the answer there is like, ah, yeah, so... Uh, we don't really have health rules that are in place for specific situations. We just kind of write them nice and vague, knowing that people... And basically, um, yeah, I, I, I think I... I think for the first... I, I think what this test really confirmed, based on the advice of the people I spoke to um, after having it, was that at some point... Uh, oh, God. Um, <laughs> at some point in the last, um, you know, while I have had COVID and it's like a remaining in their infection, which is scary. Like, you know, that's almost scary, right? Like, hearing like, okay, you have this thing, it's like, okay, I can work with this, right? You can, if you know you have something, you, you work to fight against it. Where does this tunnel lead? Why, and why is it nowhere? Um, but uh, instead, I had something much, like, uh, scary, which is like, oh yeah, at some point in the past, you had COVID. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good. It's a good thing uh, that you're fine with it. You know, good thing you're vaccinated, all these other things. But like, um, yeah, I had, a, I had a COVID thing this last week. And I wanted to share that because it was super terrifying. Uh, and also, I, I, I want to clarify that, like, in, in between all of the tests, I followed all the relevant uh, health and blah, blah, blah authority stuff, which, uh, you know, like, more than some people do. But also, you know, I think it's important to, during cases where things are infectious, to do more than you, you know, like, <laughs> need to do in some cases. You, you need to go on above and beyond. Uh, when it, You know, like, that. that's kind of what we've done with this uh, worldwide problem. Actually, you know, I, I have a... I'm stuck in a cave, and I have no idea where this cave is, or how to get out of this. I just placed some blocks and called that a day, apparently, before. Aha! I found the farm again, and now I'll never be lost between these two caves ever again. Oh my god, how is there slimes in here? <laughs> how is that human? <laughs> oh my god, I hate everything so much. Anyway, speaking of things that I hate so much, um, it's not just you, don't worry. Um, I, uh... 
I, I so basically uh, that's that's a whole thing. I want to talk about um, an interesting uh, thing that happened because I also this last week um, had some some like near near fraud situation happen. I, I had one of those like fraud alerts and I was like, wait, is this? You know, it was the first time in a while because I feel like 99% of people's exposure to fraud alert programs from their bank is like a bank being overzealous and trying to be like, yep, there is this problem uh, we've detected and we're going to suspend access to your card until you verify with us that this was you spending the money. And, um, okay, so this is free high sugarcane, and that means there's going to be a layer of, of dirt over here, right? Yeah, yeah, a layer of dirt here that is going to go down and under, and we're going to place a ton of blocks this way. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. Anyway, so, um, there is this, um, there's this very interesting, uh, thing. Like, it's, I guess it's the blame game is how I would describe things. Whenever something goes wrong, there's this, like, need to find someone to blame. And, uh, we do this all the time whether we know it or not. Like, okay, can I, can I tell you the worst example that, like, I, I used to think was dumb when I saw other people do it, but, like, it's in my instinct to do the same. You know when you're playing games and someone runs in front of the TV and then you die? And you know that you probably would have died anyway, but you're like, oh, it's all your fault. You know, it's, <laughs> if you hadn't run in front of the screen, then I would be alive right now. Um, you know, it's a su super dramatic thing to say, um, but it, it's got, like, some amount of truth to it. Also, I'm gonna go grab myself some more dirt, because I think I need some. As always, try to bring up some cobbled deep slate with me. Here we go, load up on the dirt, maybe unload on some other unnecessary inventory items. I brought some lava with me to keep running these furnaces, because I still do, you know, I, I have this, like, ultimate furnace system for all of my, uh, all, all my things sorted now, but I don't quite have, uh, the lava, you know, capacity to keep smelting it. But yeah, we got a ton of iron. I, I've got to do something with those soon. If you have ideas for that, and those ideas are make a lantern biome, then let me know in the comments. If your ideas are actually sensible things, don't let me know. I don't want to hear about real ideas. That's not what the Let's Play is for. You have misunderstood the fundamental premise if you think we're here to actually understand what's happened. Anyway, so now let's throw these back in there, I guess, just to get rid of them. Throw my slime balls away, and let's go place some sugarcane for my sugarcane farm. It's exciting to be in this place, right? It's exciting to be doing such a big project for basically no reason. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird trying to describe my excitement levels on something like that, um, but it's how it be. And sometimes, uh, you know, like, how it be is a hard thing to accept. It's one of the hardest things to accept in the world, and that's why we have what I like to call the blame game, right? We, um... I, uh, you know, I, I believe dash cams have gotten really big for uh, people who drive in a lot of countries because you're like, oh yeah, um, when you get in a crash of someone, both people want to believe it's the other person's fault because if it's your fault, not only is that like an indictment of your driving ability, which is something people hold quite closely to their chest, apparently, but also you are now, uh, you know, like it's going to cost you money. It's a big problem. No one wants to have money be costed onto them and for big problems to be there responsibility, and so instead, we play the blame game. I, I've, I've, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite things to do is, like, uh, hear about, like, um, you know, how car insurance things go, and it's like, yeah, well, I hit a parked car, but they were parked illegally, so it really is the parked car's fault that we crashed. <laughs> you know, stuff like that, um, all the time. I just find it funny to hear about, and one of the best examples of this is when you do it really successfully, and you kind of, like, gaslight someone into believing that something is their fault, right? Like, um, you know, one of, one of the biggest examples of this is the term identity theft. You ever, you, you, you familiar with the term identity theft? You should be. It's a serious problem affecting us all. And by us all, I mean, like, a specific group of people, and that specific group of people being bank people. Okay, you know, because, like, here's the deal. It's, you know, that identity theft sounds like a big deal for everyone, right? Like, oh, yeah, I don't want to have my identity stolen. And so, like, you know, what you, you, you take the logical steps to stop it. You make sure you shred your documents, all this sort of stuff. But you know what annoys me about the very premise of the phrase identity theft? Is the fact that, like, wait, 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 wait. Why are we implying that, you know, the, the, my identity is being stolen? When really, that's not what's happening at all. You know, your identity can't be stolen. Your identity is this, like, you know, thing. You know, as people will uh, remind us time and time again, we're all unique people, and you can't steal that from us. But what you can steal from someone is their bank account money. The money that is in their bank account. And you know how you do that? With 
something we call identity theft. But I don't like that term because it implies that when the bank messes up and gives your money to someone else, you know, the money you put in the bank, they don't do enough checks to verify that someone who claims that money is you, and then you go in the bank saying, please could I have my money? They're like, oh, your identity was stolen, so it's not our pro Like, I feel like that is, you know, like a, 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 a situation where a corporation is playing the blame game so effectively, and we all just accept it. We're all like, wow, yeah, that's kind of nuts, huh? That is a, uh, you know, like, you, you hear you hear this, everyone? Like, that, 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 that bank, um, you know, didn't have their you know, money stolen. It was your money that was stolen. <laughs> you know, like, a, it, I, I feel as though, like, it really shouldn't be your problem at all if the bank loses your money because it's, you know, like, that's that's their problem. But no, they've worked out how... It, imagine any other situation working this way. Like, oh, yeah, um, my car's been stolen. Oh, that's a real problem. And the car manufacturer being like, no, uh, actually, it wasn't our car that was stolen. It was your keys to the car that was stolen. And so we can't pay out on that insurance you bought because the car hasn't been stolen. Someone just has your keys and they're using that keys to access the vehicle. And it's like, wait, wait, wait. No, I don't I don't think that's how that works at all. Imagine, I, it's, it's just one of those examples where like sometimes societally we start to accept that like, you know, we're almost like corporately gaslit. <laughs> and we will just go, oh, maybe we are dumb. Maybe, maybe it is all of our fault. But I don't think we should accept that. And uh, so yeah, that is that is my controversial take, is that identity theft is a lie, and it's just a way to, you know, push blame onto victims. Or, you know, like, um, I, I feel like there's all sorts of, like, societal ways we see this. Like, um, the best one would be, like, you know, like, is, is drug addiction a crime? Like, we've made it one, but, like, is that, is that all that is required for something to really be a crime? Is there a difference between murder... You know, like, uh, which is like, it's been a crime since any, any form of humans have existed. We always punish, um, murder because, mu you know, like killing, extinguishing another man's life is like human's life, obviously, is what I'm saying, man. Have to clarify. Um, but, um, yeah, extinguishing another human's life is a very, very big deal. We, <laughs> we have that kind of forever. And then we have the more minor crimes. Like, here's, here's one that's always bothered me too. Insurance fraud, when you fraudulently claim against your insurance is a crime. Like, it's not like, oh yeah, the insurance company is allowed to take their money back if they catch you doing it. No, you will go to prison if you lie to an... You know, like, uh, it, there's something about that just feels incorrect. It's like, well, I mean, you know, don't we all lie all the time? Why is, why is lying only a crime to insurance companies? Would it be nice, because I'm someone who really values honesty. I, um, when I was like 17, I started this thing of like, always telling the truth all the time, even in places where it was hard. Um, and I very quickly realized that like, oh uh, yeah, people do not want the truth. That is a lie, first of all. But the other thing I realized was, um, you know, these, these, these layers of dirt are gonna have to go quite some, some way down, aren't they? I'm realizing now. Also, we're gonna have to dig out another layer behind that to have like a connecting staircase. So I don't just have to fly around aimlessly all the time. It's gonna be a whole problem. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I, I think that, uh, by the way, do you like the way I'm using light here? The light comes in naturally from the ceiling, through the glass. It doesn't actually look like light in the slightest, but it does add a lot more than when there's a dark ceiling above, so I hope you like it. If you don't, you know, bad news. This is a Let's Play. You're watching it in one way. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, I'm recording this in an unknown state where, like, who knows how things have actually gone, which is maybe super irresponsible, by the way. Like, you know what? When you talk about things, you should know about them definitively. Um, but I, I, I hold the opposite view. Like, actually, sometimes it's more important to have this raw view. I think that's what honesty really is. Like, um, it took me so long to work out why is honesty not objectively better. And, like, the theories I'd always have would be like, oh, yeah, some people just don't like the truth. They want to be lied to. And that is true for some people. Some people genuinely would be happier if you just lied to them all the time. When your girlfriend asks, um, hey, do I look fat in this? Don't say, well, I mean... Not as fat as you did yesterday, so that's an improvement, you know, like, <laughs> that's that's your honest set of thoughts, right? But it's also, uh, it's got this, like, uh, brutality to it. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's raw. They, the thing we do as humans is we take the thoughts that appear in our brains, and then we, we, we try to massage them. We try to put them in a way that other human beings, hopefully, uh, will enjoy, or will at least not hate uh, all, all the way, I maybe we could say is a, a bare minimum. And so... Oh man, I have not done the the dirt underneath these layers either. I think I want to, just want to have a consistent top layer here because it looks so much nicer with the glass like kind of coming down from nowhere as opposed to being flush with the ceiling. 
It's interesting why that's true. I, I, I could not tell you uh, exactly what, what is causing that. But it does seem to be true, doesn't it? Anyway, speaking of things that seem to be true, we also don't have water going all the way to where this glass is. So all sorts of problems we're gonna be working on today. Anyway, so, um, yeah, right, uh, okay. Um, so that's where dirt should be, right? Yeah, right, yeah, right, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I, I think, um, I think one of the things I've been thinking about a lot, um, in the last few days is this, like, scary, scary, um, like this, that, cause you know, like, pu public health is this thing that we've suddenly started caring about in the last few years, and we start to realize its importance in a way that is really cool, like, oh yeah, it's not, you know, like, sometimes it seems as though, like, public health is this guidance for other people and not for you, and there always is a truth to that to how people see laws, right? Like, um, you know, um, there, pe people, damn it, we're full up on inventory, um, people do commit crimes all the time, and they're like, oh yeah, but like, it's fine, because I was like, you know, like, uh, I'm not really committing the crime in the full way, and it's, you know, <laughs> everyone has justification as to why their thing is okay, and why everyone else's thing is not okay. In fact, there's, there's something I've said in this video um, that is gonna upset someone and be like, you know what, Toy Cat? The way you're implying identity thieves are cool, not cool, man. Or like, you know what, Toy Cat? The fact that, you know, you, you think that, you know, like, uh, getting, you know, tested more than once is a smart thing, and, uh, you know, that's that's you ignoring, uh, just getting the result you want to hear. Which is, I guess, when you really think about it, that is kind of what we do as people, right? That is, um, that is kind of, uh, how we, um, like, that, 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 that's how we work things, right? We, we have this view of, like, we will accept things that align with what we kind of already want to believe. The co confirmation bias is this very real, very, it's, it's one of the most real biases that you really need to check are you believing something because it's true? Or are you believing something because you want to believe it's true? Um, and oh so often is it just easy to believe this thing that really doesn't have any basis. <laughs> uh, but like, you know, it feels good. It feels correct. And if it feels correct, how can it not be correct? That's what I I, I beg you to, to ponder. Um, running out of cooked beef. Two more to go. It's, it's gonna be a struggle, but we'll, we'll make it work. Um, and so yeah, I think... Um, the, the best example of this is always um, every... Okay, so this is mostly what you hear in America where people have a lot more freedom to just pay more money until a doctor takes them, right? Um, but every single story that starts with like, oh yeah, I beat cancer is like, oh yeah, I knew I had cancer, but a doctor wouldn't tell me I would. And so I went, I kept going to different doctors until I got one that gave me the diagnosis I wanted. And, you know, in, in like any other sense, if you reverse, if you take any other illness, or if you just take a world where they're not correct, that is, like, the most dangerous, you know, like, concept to do. Like, oh yeah, the doctor said I was fine, but I ignored them and I found a doctor that says I wasn't fine. <laughs> you know, like, um, the doctor said I didn't have, um, you know, I don't know, depression. Uh, the, the doctor said I didn't have ADHD, but I kept trying until I found a doctor that would give me narcotics. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, I know, it's, it's, it's such an interesting thing that, like, you can, uh, depending on the public mood of a thing, you can... Ch kind of change the efficacy on how advice works or how you should do things. Uh, and I guess that is kind of how we have to live as humans. We have to realize that you're allowed to be this super unique individual where like, yeah, you can you can live life by your own best morals until it's a really important issue of like national public importance. Actually, you know, that, that's, that's, that's the next thing I wanted to talk about with Grass, like the blame game. Because something I've noticed about everyone, my, my, I noticed this about myself and I thought it was just me, but I think it is true for everyone, correct me if you disagree, is people are really good at doing their job if you give them like a metric to measure how good they're doing at their job. And what I mean by that is um, if you if you are working somewhere, like let's say you're handing out leaflets or you're telling people to sign up for... I, I saw this, um, this guy um, standing outside... Uh, if, if you want to know, actually. It was standing outside Borough Tube Station. I don't think it's even open anymore. I don't know why he was standing there. And he was uh, really, really hard selling this new delivery uh, for groceries um, app. It's called Gorillas um, with a Z. I think, why does it have a Z? Is it like the band? That feels like copyright infringement now that I think about it. Anyway, so there's this uh, Gorillas uh, app that you can download. That it's, it's, it's grocery delivery. It's very high, hard to get people excited about because it's like um, everything's really, really expensive and you have to pay a delivery fee and like who wants that when you can just go to the grocery store? And so um, <laughs> uh, basically uh, the guy was selling it super, super hard uh, because there was like some code you used and when you use that code, 
they can look back and be like, man, this guy did well. When you when you give people like this opportunity to like prove themselves and like a metric to show it on, they will do a really good job at pushing that metric. Sometimes this works like against your own interests. Um, my favorite situation, we'll, we'll show you, uh, this, this sounds fake, but it's real, is obviously the case in India where uh, they had far too many um, snakes and so they'd pay you money if you, um, or far too many rats, I want to say. So they'd pay you money if you could bring them a rat hide or something. And people just started breeding the rats. And then when when they realized people were breeding rats, they're like, well, we're going to stop paying you for the rats then. So people let all the rats loose, and then there was a bigger rat problem than ever. And then because of that, there was a big snake problem. And you know, long story short, I, I, I tell it slightly different every time, and I'm ruining the point. If you give people an incentive, they'll do a really good job at maxing that specific incentive out. And for the past two years... The way people measure their country's success is by, you know, uh, the, 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 the real one metric, right? Is like, how many COVID cases are in there? When there are lots of COVID cases, we blame the leaders. Like, oh, you should have shut the borders or open the borders. Or you should have done more testing or less testing. Or you should have, I can't believe you didn't lock down earlier. Or I can't believe you locked down, you know, like, <laughs> you, I can't believe we locked down and it's still bad. We, like, uh, being able to, like, criticize every decision from every angle is, like, this great thing about living in a democracy where you, you know, your, your, like, ability to participate isn't just yelling angrily at people. And, like, that's, that's all you're meant to do. That's, that's your, that's your biggest contribution. And people love to have that contribution. Let me tell you, um, that's a fact. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, um, and so as a result, um, like, for the last year, couple years, that's been the one metric. It doesn't matter what else you're doing to ruin society or make things worse in the long run for the next government or whatever. It's all about making this one metric seem as good as possible. And so a lot of countries restrict testing because like, or, or just don't have the capacity at all. And it's like, well, if we add more tests, then people will get more COVID and we'll look worse. So why would we? And it's like, well, that seems dangerous. Or like, you know, um, the whole thing of like, I, I, was, I, 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 I would like to uh, confess, I broke some guidance. They said, yeah, you cannot have another test for 90 days. You should have to assume you're positive for 14 days or 10 days. Um, and then uh, after that, just assume you never have it again. Um, <laughs> it's like, that's not how science works. That's how, you know, like, alloc efficiently allocating resources works. But I need to be gone. I need to be out of here uh, for, some, for some legal obligations. I, I genuinely have to leave within a certain time frame. And so it's like, well, that doesn't... Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I agree with that one entirely. Um, we have this we have this like worrying. I think I'm gonna just gonna be smart and I'm gonna get beef before we go down or some food at least. You know I, I'd say like chat what food are we gonna eat but this isn't a live stream. This is why I miss you chat. I'm sorry we're not streaming but I, I it's been cool seeing uh, people uh, you know like still watching the let's plays checking out the old live streams and stuff. It's it's cool that people do still care about uh, the streams even in their absentia. Ooh, you like that word, absentia? But, um, yeah, basically, um, things are a, uh, a bit of a wreck. Uh, honestly, I, I, a part of me is like, man, calling this video is the, a dangerous thing to do. But we're in a dangerous time, right? We're in this time where everyone, er, like, uh, I guess not dangerous time. We're in a, we're in a time where one of the things that scares is that. I, I, I think, though, in, in general... It's, um, like, I, I want to go back to my previous thing. It's like, actually, it is pretty cool that we all start caring about a thing. Like, oh, I, I, I've spoken about all the negatives of, like, oh, yeah, so we just kind of, we just kind of yell at the government and blame them for everything now. And that's, that's the new participation in democracy <laughs> we've started to do. But, um, gonna, gonna murder some drowns, get some XP going in there. Um, but, uh, on, on the other hand, it is cool that, like, when there's a crisis, everyone wants to put their hands on the deck. Like, um, this is... I, uh, I, I guess the way to put this would be, you, when, with every good piece of advice, with every, like, terrible human na piece of nature, there's always something good you can take from it. Maybe I'm just, like, eternally an optimist in a way that I really shouldn't be. Like, you know, who, what's the reason in being optimistic? At some point, you, you're just being a fool more than being actually optimistic, you know? Like, um, you know, I, I, there's all sorts of examples of this, like, oh, yeah, actually, um, <laughs> I, I spoke to a to a health professional recently, and they're like, yeah, my car was broken into, but really it's a good thing. I, 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 I bet it stopped um, someone from breaking into, I, you know, the person who broke into my car, maybe they didn't beat their wife that day, and so maybe I made the world a little bit of a better place. And, uh, you know, I, you know I, I should have let her keep believing that, but instead I was like, well, or maybe, just maybe, 
Um, now he's now he's gonna be now now his wife is gonna go one day without being beaten, and so the next time uh, you know he does do it, she's now a little bit closer to thinking, oh, but he's not always like this. Remember that one time he came home and he didn't do it, and now now you made the world a worse place. She was like, why would you why would you go through that much effort to convince me of something bad, Andrew? Um, <laughs> and then I realized, you know what? It's all about feelings. Going back to that Bruce thing, but yeah, I think that like every 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 human like thing there's always like an upside and a downside right like on the upside we really care about these big issues that face us all and let's be honest um you know at one point and even you know now if you like if things go bad enough the the biggest threat that can face us is a communicable disease uh that spreads by by coughing and whatever else don't get me wrong very very aware of that but um also it means uh, like the problem with like everyone just being focused on it is people need, um, people want to care about an issue, but sometimes lack the knowledge, the capacity, the, um, you know, the details to really do so. And the reason that starts to result in problems is when people, um, to, to keep things simple, is like, we will simplify down what is the way you should care about this. You know, even even the, the, the healthcare thing of like, cannot do a test for 90 days, I don't know what the science on that is. I've looked into it and I find it really hard and most people won't look into it. They'll just be like, I want to believe this. I don't want to believe this, you know? Um, and so, like, when when we have these big crises, everyone, like, uh, you know, like, um, Ukraine and Russia are in some real tensions right now. And the U.S. is getting involved because, you know, that's 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 what that's what America does. Gets involved in issues. Um, and so, like, you know, like, you people know something bad is happening there. And it's like, man, gotta, gotta step in and defend. Or... You're like, man, there's a war about to happen. Make sure that our boys in blue, I guess boys in green, boys in... What what color do the boys in the military wear these days? I guess it depends on where they're going, right? Anyway, the boys in, boys in whatever color gotta gotta step in and uh, gotta, gotta do their bit, right? That's 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 clearly uh, what, what it is. And so the fact that you can have basically... These like rash reactions to like the vaguest what you've heard is why I think we need this like middle step of like... A media that can help to translate these super complex, you know, concepts into uh, understandable things that people can understand vaguely. And uh, I think, truth be told, uh, they, they don't do a good job at it. <laughs> I think, truth be told, we have one interface that's meant to help, um, you know, turn all these super complex concepts in the world into ones that we can understand and then have opinions on. And instead, what we do with it is, you know, like Eva, there's like the, the clickbaits of the world and there's the... Ignoring what's best for, um, you know, what would be best for... Oh, I think we should use dirt for this, actually. So let's let's break those. Throw some dirt right there instead. Because we do need dirt, technically speaking. Anyway, um, yeah, we, we you know, like, um, we, we, people find that they're more... Like, what, once, once news and, like, this in, informative thing becomes entertainment, you start to realize that people aren't watching more and therefore giving more ad money, etc. from the entertainment bit they're they're more interested in the in the whole like oh yeah i will watch more because this makes me feel the way that i want to feel which is you know truth be told what we're all trying to do when we help but at least you at least you know like taking a feeling that we use selflessly you know like this i'm gonna help by learning about an issue then pressuring on that issue and turning it into ooh, we can get people madder and feeling like they're helping more even when they're doing less that's where things get scary just like um I think one of the most dangerous things we did um, early on was tell people like, okay, so, um, you know, um, masks aren't safe. They're not safe in the slightest. And then we went to, actually, they're really safe. You wear them and it's gonna stop, so it's gonna stop the spread. And it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> the thing that stops is if people don't engage socially um, and then the backup plan is moth. The backup plan. The backup plan. And then it's gone. And, uh, <laughs> right? Like, uh, or you gotta go all in. You gotta be like, yep. Um, every like, I, I think that so many conflicting messages, because they come from so many places, led to this thing where, like, everyone thinks they're helping while all screaming at each other and being like, how are you not doing the thing that's helpful? I'm, you know, and then they're like, but I'm doing the thing. Look, I'm wearing the, the mask thing. And they're like, but like, we, you're, you're doing X, Y, Z, and that's way more dangerous. And then everyone's yelling at each other. And I've seen this, like, a disillusionment from so many people online and to some extent, like, in my uh, own small circle of just, like, 
I don't, I can't trust the people around. You know, the, there was a time I needed to trust them the most, and then what they all did was horrifying. And uh, I think, I think that that is going to take a while to recover from. I think, I think people being primed to be helpful is great, but I think when people use that prime to be helpful um, in negative ways, we get into a scary place. Is what I'm saying. And or maybe I think that because I'm primed to think that the. Uh, like, I, I really have this, like, deep distrust of people who are 100% sure they're doing the right thing. Like, maybe it's because I care about philosophy so much and, like, what is the right thing, right? Like, what what is the correct thing to do? You know, it, is it, it, you know, e even the thing I'm pretty strongly believed about, which is, like, identity theft, the amount of effort your bank puts into protecting you from identity theft, when really it's, like, protecting their own systems from misuse. I get so much more, uh, you know, may maybe, like, I get the collective security of identity theft improvements, but like I have so, uh, so many times, so many fun things I've wanted to do haven't worked because I've had a card cancelled because they suspected um, illegitimate activity. Even though I tell my bank, like, look, I'm gonna be in this country, so don't be suspicious when you see a, you know, a spend for two thousand pounds on a bike in Nevada or something. Don't worry, I was, I, I said I would be there, and I do like biking, as you can tell from my past. But no, no, no. Instead, <laughs> instead we get the system where like, oh, my card doesn't work. My other card doesn't work. They can't take a security deposit. Guess I'll just take the bus home. Thank you. Um, thank God I had American cash on me actually that day. I, ju I just realized how <laughs> disastrous that could be in other ways. Actually, wait, Uber exists, do you not? Never mind. Man, there's, there's so many problems that used to be so much bigger before phones. Do you ever think about that? Like, just how bad some things were? before we had phones to deal with them. Like, um, there's the trope that, like, every horror movie has to exist in a world without phones because, like, almost every major scary thing is just like, oh, yeah, we'll just call them on their mobile telecommunications device. And we'll let, you know, like, oh, yeah, you, you heard from Zach in a while? No. Let me just send him a text. Ah, he's just in the bathroom. It's fine. Um, like, uh, when, when, you know, like, we're more connected than ever. Or are we more disconnected than ever? Really? I think smartphones are making us more disconnected. See, look how smart I am. Do you, hear, do you hear those thoughts I just said? Wow, I am such an incredibly brave and clever uh, gentleman for saying those words, am I right? But, um, okay, so now we're gonna finish the top of this. Just removing those deep slate blocks. Just making it look a little bit cleaner up there, I hope. And then we'll be good. By the way, I'm like 99% sure this pickaxe is gonna break, but I'm kind of okay with that. So I hope that you're okay with that too. Or actually, this should be a whole video of just making people nervous about my soon-to-break pickaxe. I mean, it's probably not going to break for a while, right? That's that seems that seems logical. I mean, it's on an empty bar, but that's like a hundred something mines left, probably. Or maybe it's not. We'll find out, won't we? Um, but yeah. So uh, one of the one of the things that um, I, I I always have distrust of is people who are hundred percent sure they're doing the right. Thing, you know, I think it's fine to like, you know, be like relatively sure like yeah This is probably better than the alternative, but when you're absolutely sure I think that's like a scary thing <laughs> You know, maybe this is just me being the, the world's most uncertain person and being suspicious of people who are like how do you know? How can you be so certain about anything man? Um, maybe that is just what I am and maybe uh, I should accept that fact Okay, let's mine these blocks and then let's try and jump over there don't think it's gonna work, so we'll mine back here, and there we go. Um, but yeah, so look, look at this, doing crouch placing like I'm a filthy Java player. You see this? Look at, look out, look how hard it is to play Java Edition compared to Bedrock. I can't even believe people do this every day. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that I'm gonna remove more of these, get some dirt flowing down, uh, get some uh, fixed up ceiling. Just want to have this like be perfectly matched, you know. Anyway, um, I. I think that, like, to be 100% sure you're doing the right thing is a really hard thing. I think instead, we should operate on the probabilities, you know, model of, like, you're probably doing better when you, um, I don't know, what's an example? When you recycle, you're probably doing better than when you don't recycle, right? Like, um, especially things that are actually useful that we recycle. Um, I don't know, I think, uh... I think aluminium is a good one, or maybe it's maybe I'm wrong about that. There's there's a type of metal that is really really easy to recycle, and everywhere actually does take, and they they, they do a thing. But with um, there's there's a problem in the like this is the whole like everyone wanted to help. Everyone learned that like we have this collective issue 
of the world. We have so much trash around the world. We're burying it. We're sending it out to sea. We're burning it in um, places like um, Sweden or China or the Philippines or whatever. And so, okay, that's that's bad. And everyone steps into action. They're like, how do we stop this? We need to recycle more. And it's like, yes, that's smart. Let's all get down on the recycling more train. And then uh, the problem is, is that like, um, they put pressure on people like, please take more from us in the recycling. But uh, when, when you look at like what percent of recycling is actually recycled, it's like depressingly low. And then also because people believe something in the recycling is better than something in the bin, the trash if you're American, um, now, there's also this problem of like, oh yeah, people wish cycle, they just assume something is recyclable rather than not because then they'll get the good feeling of having recycled, which is good. Recycling is good for you. Everyone should recycle all the time. And it's like, oh no. You're, we make, we're making the world, we accidentally, while trying to make things better, made things worse. And that's why you've got to be like, okay, yeah, it's probably better to do this, but I'm going to check every now and then just to confirm. <laughs> um, and I feel like when you operate on that model, um, you might find, like, it's harder to do certain good things, sure. But also you'll find it easier to do other things. So I'm going to start to load some cobblestone in one of these random chests. I think, I, I thought the cobblestone went all the way around this corner, but it actually stops right here. And given that I have this much cobblestone, it's taking up too much space. I think I'm going to take a ton and make some furnaces for the next Let's Play. We're going back to Furnace, I Furnace Biome Island. It's going to be fun. See, there's a little little teaser for you. Anyway, so let's um, let's go back underground. Let's let's finish this off. Let's get our. I mean, by finish off, we haven't placed the. Sh we we've been working on the sugarcane farm for two full, nearly hour long episodes right now, and we haven't placed the single block of sugarcane. What I did find is I found this, where one of my sugarcane rows, for no good reason, is just inward by two blocks. So I think I have to also mine this out. Oh wait, wait, I need to place a single sugarcane today, so we can say that we did good. You see that? Look, look at this. Do you see how right now there's a torch? Well, soon you're gonna find how the torch goes there. And now, ooh, look at, look at the progress we're making now. Ooh, that's one. Two, three sugar canes planted today. We had a successful day. But no, um, oh, I think we're too high up, right? Oh no, that's just uh, up here. I think, um, I think there's this uh, worrying premise of like knowing you're doing the right thing uh, that leads people into like super scary places. <laughs> um, I think, uh, you know, these example would be like, you know, canceling, right? Where you're like, I am so sure this person is a bad person based on this tweet that I read just now that they posted a long time ago that I'm going to literally call up their job, try and get them fired. I'm going to um, harass them, you know, because it's okay to harass bad people. <laughs> that is a that is a societal standard that definitely is not worrying. And uh, it's actually kind of... Yeah, I, I think it actually makes more sense to destroy this all the way down first, by the way. Um, and basically what I'm trying to say is it's really, really scary how... Um, when people are like, sure if something is correct, because that's that's when you can be zealous about something, right? If you're if you're just like, yep, yeah, this is this is probably better. It's probably fine. Ho hopefully, you know. Um, and then at least it's like you know there's the space for you to to go and improve on that. But if you're a hundred percent sure, if you're like, yes, of course this is uh, better, that's where that's where the danger zone is. That's that's where you can start to justify like, oh, well because I'm in the right, of course I can do, and then X Y Z scary thing, and then we're all we're all worried about. The, the next tyrant we've created, because that's that's how tyrannical things come. No, no one wants to do a bad thing. I find that that is my general impression. I'm I'm so scared. I, I, I keep getting. I, I'm actually waiting on a on a result for a um on a for a test. In case you're curious, um, but uh, it's it's very very my my whole life for the next like week and a half. I think it's actually a full 13 days because of how. Uh, things work for entry into Canada. It's all it's all changing based on this thing that is happening right now for me But happened a week and a half ago in the past for you And so you probably know about it, but like the the nervous situation I'm in you know what what if I am doing something wrong? What if what if I should have? Um, <laughs> accepted that actually I've got to treat myself as being uh, you know like a, a Positive for a full see positive because like you know like 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 cats like IBX toy cat like look at this I'm an ocelot skin. I got paws See, that's very funny. That's a good joke. It's hilarious. I make the funny sometimes, and it's 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 good. Um, but um, yeah, there's this um, there is this uh, like crisis of like, oh yeah, what if something's gone wrong then? What if 
You know, even though, like, it said that it was okay to leave my home to go to a test center, it's like, well, you, you shouldn't have gone anyway, you monster. You, like, because, you know, like, whenever, whenever, if something is confirmed as a positive, you effectively expose the person who tested you. Like, obviously some tiny amount, but, like, you know, this is a super spreadable thing, so some tiny amount might not, might be enough to cause some problems, huh? Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I feel like, I feel like doubt is one of the things we tell people not to do, because a lot of people do have it in large quantities, but some people just need a shred of self-doubt, right? Some people, we just need to go over there and be like, how do you not doubt yourself so much? Please, could you? Here is a list of things you should doubt yourself about. You seen your nose? Have you seen that thing? Have you seen how big your nose is? Why aren't you doubting yourself already, man? Um, <laughs> this is advice with Toy Cat. Uh, let's let's bully children into into submission. Um, but yeah, so I'm uh, I'm gonna put my pillager banner away. I had a raid that ran off during this video. I'm very sorry if that offends anyone. I I really am mono focused on this project. I think that's how Minecraft works for me. I get really excited about one project at a time. Because if you're excited about everything, it's so stressful working out what to do, and then you can do nothing. That's what we what we discussed in last week's Let's Play. It's a it's a very common problem for me, and apparently I hear from some of you, so that's that's always cool to to learn about. Um, I, I, I know, like, um, finding other people who share, like, a rare thing with you, it's nice, you know? It's, uh, makes you feel less alone in this world. Um, and believe me, you should feel alone all the time. There is, you know, there are moments where you're not alone. But believe me when I say they're just moments. This is, <laughs> this is, this is going light with Toy Cat. Okay, let's, let's, let's whip out the old, the old, uh, IBX pick tax again. Let's mine some of these last little blocks. I think we made really good uh, positive progress today on, um, like, at least making it look better so that when we do our streams here, we've got, like, a positive place to mine into, right? And that's a that's a positive thing. See, I'm going to keep saying positive, and it's going to it's gonna be funny because, like, you know, that's that's what you are when you, you have the, the bad thing inside of you, too. Wow, look, it's puns for day with multiple layers. Um, but no, yeah, I really, I really think that, um, like, being able to do your bit to help is useful. But knowing, knowing when to stand back and when to doubt yourself and be like, ah, I shouldn't do that, just as valuable. Um, one, of the, one of the problems that um, every charity I've ever known has um, that takes, uh, like, donations is people, when, when a charity says, donate your stuff, it'll really help the charity out. Um... People are like, yeah, I'm going to help out by giving them four bags of garbage. And it's like, oh. Or like um, food banks. They always have a shortage of the items people don't feel good about donating. Um, like, uh, it, it used to be until, like, obviously, there's been a lot of... Also, I think I've accidentally made a slime farm in here. Um, it used to be until there's, like, a lot of movements recently. I think, like, now it's, like, you know, something, something. Feminism is, like, uh, like uh, people wouldn't donate, uh, you know, sanitary pads for the homeless people. Because, like... Oh yeah, that's you know like uh, it's 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 food they need, but like well, I mean maybe just as base level a need is like hygiene and not feeling you know gross or literally being gross, you know, depending on how you feel about uh, you know like uh, bleeding all over things. And so like okay, that's a thing. Or um, you know people always donate like certain canned goods and like so it's like no like please donate the foods that last as long as they can. I guess that would be canned goods actually, but like don't don't donate a box of cereal or milk. You know, people do need milk, that is true, but I think they need, like, a, a food that's edible more. Or, here's another, like, uh, again, this is, like, it's uh, one of those, like, pieces of advice that's so simple, but it's like, oh, yeah, I can see how you'd miss that. Is cans that require a can opener are the worst thing to give to people. Because, like, if you're on the streets, you probably don't have a can opener in your little, you know, your little bag that you carry around with you. And so, yeah, people... People love to feel like they're helping, and sometimes they're hurting. And so if you want to help... You know, work out how to help. And sometimes I think it's better to just be like, okay, you can't help on this thing, that's fine. You can help on something else. We need to make that be a more acceptable thing. Like, my skill set is not equipped for this specific thing. I'm going to find the place where it is, and I'm going to work there instead. Because, um, I don't know. Here's an example, right? I, um, I, whenever I, um, I, I, I had, uh, so I, I used to have a Discord server. I, I technically still do, but it's not official in any way. If, if anything goes bad, that Discord server, I'm, I'm claiming hands off. I haven't touched that thing in months or years. Um, as a YouTuber, worst thing you can do is make a Discord server. Pro tip, don't do it. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> if you're an aspiring YouTuber, um, I, there, there will be no good, but there will be a lot of bad that comes from a Discord server. Um, anyway, so um, 
I'm really worried about placing dirt here because it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, like uh, cause some some funniness to happen. So we'll just start placing from around here. Um, so uh, yeah, I oh, we have to remove the ceiling on this next. So I think that being super willing to help is really nice. It's you know, a good good job. Thank you for thank you for wanting to help. Here is a gold star for you if you wanted to help with something recently. But also. Um, knowing, knowing how to actually help is how we make the world probably a better place, right? Uh, and I think sometimes even, this is to flip that all the way around, because, you know, I like to, I like to flip things full circle sometimes, is even sometimes, sometimes the best way to help is not by telling people, you're not even helping with what you're doing, and instead being like, yeah, that's great, you could do better like this, but either way, you're doing great anyway, and keep it up. Um, <laughs> you know, like, um... I think people forget that the way advice works is it needs to be human oriented and you can't be like, okay, here is the perfectly optimal thing a person can do to help the environment. Step one, kill yourself because of the amount of emissions you have to use every day. Step two, kill those around you. Wait, step, I guess it'd be step two then step one in that one. But you get the point. So murder, suicide, not actually the best thing you can tell someone to do. Instead, tell them to do something just a little bit better than what they're doing. If we, if we all make incremental changes, maybe we make the world significantly better overall or maybe that's lame and we don't go anywhere that way i don't know though you be the boss of uh judging that for now okay i i really like the way this is uh this is uh come out so far um do you want to do you want to give a quick peek to it so i'll place some torches over here again probably need to place the rest of these blocks too i don't know why it's just one it looks very weird like that this is the sugarcane farm as it stands right now it eventually is going to be filled with water, and then obviously next to that water is going to go some sugar cane. Um, did I just get hit by a zombie from down there? That is... You know, where do all these zombies even spawn? I'm starting to think that it's dark down here or something. Um, but yeah, I, um, I, I'm I in a very precarious place right now. Um, as of this video coming out, I should be out of that precarious place. But it's, it's nerve-wracking sometimes. It is... Um, and it's nerve-wracking sharing things also with the internet, knowing how the internet be about their things. But um, yeah, if you have anything you disagree with in there, maybe you think that wish cycling is better than recycling and like, you know, that, that encourage, because there, there is the argument that that encourages them to learn to start recycling this stuff so they don't have to send it out to waste and that costs them double money because now they're collecting it, then they're sorting it, then they're sending it out to waste when they could have just sent it out to waste. So, you know, um, I, I would love to hear if you think I'm wrong about a thing. But most importantly, I'd love to hear how your day is going. Tell me about your Monday. Um, I feel like um, something I've realized recently, because I've been in this like real challenging space. Um, I I had to decide recently between like two very bad options um, for the future of my life. And at the last minute, it stopped being two bad options. And one of the options started being good. And then at the last minute, <laughs> the... The good option went away, and it went to like two, two, two bad options again. And it was like a, it was a roller coaster of emotions. Let me tell you, it's not, not what I was expecting, um, for my early January. I guess it always was what I was expecting. But, um, basically, um, I, I'm now in this place where, I at least uh, things are tricky, but I think I'm going to enjoy the challenge uh, up ahead. Um, and there's a lot of obstacles. I, I've encountered my first ones this week, it seems. But I, I, and I hope that I don't encounter too many more after that. Speaking of things I hope I don't encounter, um, this, this video was brought to you by, I don't know, IBX2Cat. Do you want to hear about news, but like, and what's happening in like long form informative ways? Then IBX2Cat's your boy. I spoke about military bases for 35 minutes in a way that wasn't even relatively informed. Do you wanna you wanna learn about that? That's right, youtube.com slash ibx2cat. The premier challenge chat channel for being uninformed, but talking about it anyway. See, I'm I'm good at sales pitches. Um <laughs> I hope you'll enjoy this video. Uh, let me know what you think of the, the, the farm look so far. I, I like it. I like it quite a bit. Actually, you know what? No 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 no, it's not over yet. We'll place a clay there and there. And there and there. And now we can actually have the dirt go all the way? Oh, we ran out of dirt. I guess we can't have the dirt go all the way. We can move the glass at least, which is kind of like 
messing with the vibe. Okay, so this is this is what it looks like so far. This is Lash Sugarcane Farm. Um, I I think it's I think it's looking pretty swell. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Underground sugarcane farm is what we've effectively built. Um, it's far too much effort for what we're doing here. But welcome to what I enjoy in Minecraft. I uh, look forward to seeing you next time when I put far too much episode, too far too much effort into a uh, a furnace and fletching table biome. But uh, welcome, welcome, and I hope that you enjoyed because I'll see you all in the next one. You boyed. Oh, let me know what you thought of the hour-long Let's Play too. If you if you enjoyed it, become a member. They take longer to make, but I, I think. Uh, obviously, uh, sometimes it's good to sit down for a long time, especially when we, we've we uh, had fewer videos. January is almost over. In the uh, middle of February, we'll be back to normally scheduled content. It'll be a lot of fun. So yeah, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye. Look, I'm going to wave at you because I'm positive that things will be okay. <laughs> Goodbye.